Greetings, and welcome to Quantum Healing with Candace. I'm your host, Candace Craw Goldman. This program was created to assist humans in this rapidly changing world, while is expanding into new realms, new ways of thinking and being. It is based upon the foundation of the late, great Dolores Cannon's work, and our continued contact with her from beyond the veil. So thank you, Dolores, for continuing to encourage us to explore new directions. Also, thanks to Greg Prescott and Michelle Walling at In5D.com for making this show possible. I'd like to take a moment to thank all of my wonderful supporters of the show and this work and all of my In5D friends, my New Earth Journey friends, my Facebook friends, QHHT practitioners, and of course, clients. With humanity's new understanding and acceptance of the quantum world and the role that consciousness plays in shaping both our individual and our collective reality, we have plenty of subject material for this show. I'm a full-time practitioner of Dolores' hypnosis method and had the honor and distinct privilege of working with and alongside of her for several years. You can find out more about my practice of quantum healing and my consulting and coaching services at NewEarthJourney.com. And I'd like to mention I'm now offering two new remote quantum healing services. One is Quantum Healing Meditation Process, a personalized and completely unique to you downloadable MP3 file. I'm also offering a new long-distance quantum energy healing service that you can think of as something similar to Distance Reiki. Call or email me about details. And lastly, before we get started tonight, for those of you looking for a practitioner of Dolores Cannon's method of quantum healing, or for those who have trained with Dolores in the past, take note of this website, DoloresCannonQHHT.com. There you will find an easy-to-use photo listing of practitioners, their blogs, YouTubes, and published books. And also for the serious practitioner of Dolores' method, her original Quantum Healing Support Forum, which has eight years of abundant resources. And again, you can find all of that at DoloresCannonQHHT.com. This show supports those who are dedicated members of our support forum community. Today is May 10th, 2016, and I'm actually doing the show solo tonight. But I'm going to be reading from the practitioner blog at the website that I just described, DoloresCannonQHHT.com. The first blog that I would like to read is by Tom Wagbo. He lives in Norway and has been a member of our support forum since 2013. This story was published in September of last year. And it is called a QHHT story, Oracle of Delphi. It's really an amazing story, and I'd like to read it to you right now. In a QHHT session, almost anything can happen. Quantum healing hypnosis technique is a unique past life regression and healing technique developed by Dolores Cannon many years ago. It is not like any regular hypnosis or regression method out there. The number of dedicated practitioners and clients are increasing all over the world, mainly because of the vast number of books Dolores has written, based on information from her many thousands of sessions with clients. But also, of course, the miraculous healings that are taking place. There are a lot of good reasons for having a QHHT session, because this is just so much more than just the healing. It's also a great way to find answers to everything you'd want to know about yourself or really anything else in our existence. We never know what our higher self has planned for us to experience. But it is always exactly what we need and are meant to experience. It is what is important for us right now. The higher self, or subconscious as Dolores calls it, is a higher aspect of our self a collective energy that knows everything about us. It sees the higher perspective and always wants the best for us and to help us. It is pure love. And when we are in a relaxed state of trance, we are able to experience what the higher self wants us to see 
feel, or sense in any other way and let it come through and speak to us. A few days ago, a very spiritual lady with great knowledge and wisdom came to see me for a session. I will call her Ingrid. For half her life, she has lived in a village up in the mountains, somewhere in South America, not far from a sacred energy vortex. According to her higher self, this spot is the most important one for Gaia. She has always felt spiritual and was now seeking answers about the many strange experiences she's had in life and also why she felt she had to move from Norway to go live at this place. She has always felt connected and guided but needed help to get some more answers. She truly believes that everything happens for a reason even though her life has been very hard with a lot of challenges. During the session, the client is switching between describing details from the scenes and giving extensive information related to the person's life. It seems she has access to almost everything that this person knew and did. When I asked about things she didn't know the answer to, she just went deeper to find it. Her level of trance shifted from a deep to an even deeper state many times. Her higher self actually came in a couple of times, all on its own, speaking in third person. Her voice changed, and she talked a lot slower. At her beautiful place, she couldn't see the sky. Instead, there was a path leading up to the surface from behind a waterfall. I asked her to follow it, and soon she could see a mountain with an entrance at a distance. At first, she was reluctant to go there because of what she felt about the place. She found herself to be a 25-year-old woman wearing a white robe and sandals. This was in the 8th century BC at a place called Delphi in Greece. She belonged to a sisterhood of women who all lived and worked at this site as oracles. They had servants to help them because they worked all day long. It was a very strict and hard life. They didn't have much privacy. Only at night in their own little cell, small caves within the cave, and no men were allowed there. The oracles were kept out of contact with any other people to protect them from being influenced or bribed. They were all selected to be oracles. It was predetermined before they came into physical bodies, just like the Dalai Lama in Tibet. They were taught from a very young age. They had to work as oracles 20 to 35 years before they could retire. It was done to help the development of humanity on Earth. And after retiring, they decided who were going to be the next oracles. They also helped in preparing the little girls that were chosen and also raising them because they were taken away from their families. Their work was to tap into the universal knowledge and provide answers to those who came with questions, which were mostly of academic character like philosophy and mathematics. Plato and Archimedes were among those who used the oracles for these purposes. The oracle sat on stone benches right beneath an opening in the cave ceiling so that the people who had questions could hear the answers from the top of the cave through the opening. They were not allowed to see the oracles. The oracles induced themselves into a trance by inhaling smoke from a lot of incense that was placed around inside the room. They had strict orders not to influence or change any of the information. And this was very important. If they did, they would be punished. Sometimes it was very hard to tell exactly what they saw. It was their duty to report the truth and nothing but the truth. They had the ability to go forward into the future or back in time to find information from lost civilizations. In the next scene, she has gray hair and is feeling old and tired. Someone is calling for her and she can see a very bright light. Her work is done. 
She's very relieved. Many things have been positive. It was a very hard life. She can see a tall man with blue clothes coming towards her. His aura is shining with light. He smiles at her and asks her to come with him. And then she leaves her body. They embrace each other and suddenly they are in this big, bright hall with pink and turquoise lights emanating from the crystal walls and ceiling. The floor has white light coming up from underneath it, shining through the stones. And then more beings arrive. They are very happy to see her and they are greeting her telepathically. They are light beings dressed in white and they float over the floor towards her. They do not have any facial features. All she can see is light emanating great love. She belongs to this group. This place is a middle station between incarnations where they talk about their experiences. They rest and choose new assignments. All of them originally come from Sirius. They're volunteers that came here to help Earth. This great hall is inside a big silvery pyramid in a different dimension. It is all etheric. She has seen it before in her visions in the present life. And from this place she now knows that she has had three lives as an oracle in Delphi, in between other lives as well. And from the lives as an oracle she learned discipline, humbleness and responsibility and also to be completely honest with everyone. And so now I moved her to another place in time and when she arrived all she can see is white and golden light. This is the final resting place which is Source. It feels very sacred. She just is. Like a thought that doesn't think. Pure consciousness. She has been there before, but she needed to come back in order to recharge and to be reminded of where she comes from and what the Source is. She needed to experience absolute love and completeness. She just floats and absorbs, becoming stronger and stronger. Time doesn't exist. It can be a second or a thousand years. She feels what infinity is. There is no beginning or end. She understands this with her heart. It is overwhelming. This is exactly what is meant by the great invocation. It is the light, love, and the power. But now she feels it's time to move on. She has gathered enough power. I tell her to just drift and float to another important time and place where we can find information. And after a while of drifting, a black wall appears to her. This is all the darkness and negativity in the world, but she has no fear of it. She is just observing and then floats right through it to the other side, ending up in the new era that is to come to Earth. She can see that it is all balanced. This came to be because enough beings were able to absorb light love and power from the source which then perforated the darkness completely. We must not allow ourselves to be captured by the darkness but keep searching for the light in order to gain power from it. We must not be ignorant of the negative things that are going on. We should know about it but not get involved in it. Let it take our focus away from what is light and love. We should spread the light around us and avoid everything that creates fear, like watching TV. This will cause others to start waking up. Suddenly she becomes disturbed and cries. She has gone back in time and finds herself standing on the ground before Jesus' cross. She doesn't want to talk about it at first, but since she's had short visions from this many times before, she accepts that she must explore it. She tries touching Jeshua's feet, but she can't reach him. She feels great sorrow and pain. She is repeating that she must remember who she is. 
And at this point, she's very upset, and I'm doing my best to comfort her. It is so hard, she says. I've tried to run from this many times because I could never accept or believe that I was her. Miriam Magdala is her real name. I wanted to go with Jeshua, to die with him, because I didn't believe I could cope without him. And Jeshua tells me that I must go on with my life because I have important things to do. She goes on about how important it is that the church and its followers begin to take Miriam seriously. The Bible should have Miriam's testament in it because she followed the true teachings, not the letters from Paul and Peter. Jeshua and Miriam were both Essene. It was the teachings of the Essenes that were supposed to be in the Bible. The Bible was falsified. The rest of Miriam's testament is in the Vatican. Some of it is known. The last thing she remembers from that scene is being hit in the back and the head by a soldier, and she passes out. What she did not know then was that Jeshua went into a very deep trance when he was on the cross, so deep that, de that the soldiers believed he was dead, but he never really died. The soldiers took him down and carried him to his tomb soon enough for him to survive. He got out, and later he went to India and lived for many years. And now in the session, the higher self is coming in without even being asked for it, and her voice changes. For a long time, Ingrid has wished for her consciousness to merge with her higher being. It has happened gradually over time, but she is not aware of how far the merging has come. It is important that she leaves all of her problems to the higher self. She's had a much harder life than was really necessary. Now she is very tired and needs the strength from Source and the higher self. She has to be more open for this because she has access to it. It is important not to move from the village she has a very special connection with the Earth's energy. She must go on with her mission to help Gaia through energy work at the sacred place on the mountain. She knows people there that will tell her the exact location. It's been held secret for many years. She must go onto that mountain and find the spot where the energy is concentrated and place her hands on it. This will give her physical body more energy. She still has many years left to do her work in this lifetime. It is important that people who are sick can come here for healing. A healing center should be established outside the village. But organization and capital is needed for this purpose. And it was the higher self that led her to go live at this place to work as a healer. That's what she is. She knows she can do this. She is already doing a lot of important work in her sleep that is crucial to peace on earth. Because the higher self already has taken over, I go on asking about the reasons for showing her the different lives or existences. The life is Miriam Magdala. The reason why she was shown this life is Miriam is because she needs to accept her own greatness. Miriam had taken on a lot on her shoulders. Being who she was and that kind of responsibility is frightening to her. She does not believe she has it in her, and she has not been willing to recognize their connection, but they are the same. She must accept this completely. When she does, it will give her strength, authority, and self-confidence that she didn't have before. It was just an outer shell. Miriam and Joshua had both great authority and that were perfectly balanced with love and humbleness. This is the core of the message that we have tried to tell her all along, to remember who she is. She has not been willing to listen. Sometimes it was necessary to, quote, hit her over the head, end quote. Her stubbornness can be good sometimes, but there must be a limit to it. And her life as an oracle at Pythia, the Oracle of Delphi. 
Like in every life she has shown, it was also about serving a higher purpose. To show her that she had taken on a mission that not only was her own, but the decision of a higher group. Ingrid is a member of the Council for this Galaxy. Some of the work she is doing is what causes her body to shiver with cold. She takes her consciousness with her when she travels to other dimension to share information with the Council. This is depleting her energy and causes her body temperature to drop. It mostly happens during sleep, but also when she is awake. This is also the reason why she took on lives as a leader in several of her incarnations on Earth. One of them is Hakanatan in Egypt, the female pharaoh with the beard. Hatshepsut is her daughter in present life. She was a strong leader. I could hear Ingrid had taken over now. It was not the higher self anymore. Still, she had a lot of great information to share. Akhenaten's body was weak and not properly adjusted to earth after a long time on Sirius. He didn't have epilepsy like many believed. It was the side effect of a too fast incarnation. Despite his flaws and strange looks, he would not do anything to change because, as a god, he wanted to be different. And the question was asked, who was it that Ingrid got in touch with through the Ouija board many years ago? The answer, they were from a group called the Masters of the White Lodge, which is also from the group from Sirius. She became silent for a while, and when I tried to ask the next question, she suddenly interrupted. She is pointing a finger right below her third eye. There is an implant here. Ingrid got the implant at age of three. That is why they have all known about her since then. They had to force her to wake up and not let herself be captured by politics. She has pain in the spot between her eyes where the implant is. It's like an antenna, she says. And then she suddenly says to me, You! You are from the serious group. I can feel it in my heart. Everything will come. You are taken care of. The person who donated some of his bone marrow to you when you had leukemia is from the serious group as well. This was arranged because you have important things to do in the future too. Nothing happens by accident, little brother. I decide to ask her about the energy in the room because I can feel it very strongly in my body. I ask if it is the energy of the higher self that I am feeling. The answer is, in this room right now, there are ten invisible beings from Sirius. I then thought I should ask her who her higher self is. The answer, she is a high priestess from Sirius and one of the leaders of the Sirius group who's had some of the hardest jobs, but the higher self is multidimensional. The being that speaks through Ingrid's body right now is only a part of the greater whole. Two other parts are in physical bodies at this time. One is in South Africa. She's a black woman. The other is in Japan. It's like a sacred geometry triangle. These have very strong personalities. Then the question, what will the changes be like for Ingrid in the future because of this session? There will be some changes in her way of living. More security, better access to capital and financing because she will now have a greater acceptance of who she is. She needs and deserves to work with meaningful projects. She will feel more balanced, calm, safe, and have a greater authority. She will trust more than before that she is on the right path. Also, she will not care so much anymore about what other people say and think of her. Right now, she's establishing a greater network of friends that will be helpful for her. She needs to go to Sweden because she has more contacts there. She will have more energy. It is important that the light workers are connected, work together, and support each other. The energies must be focused where they are most needed. There are so many suicides in Norway because a big percentage of the population have lost their spiritual values. They have metal hearts. It's a country of metal hearts. Healers must get together to help with this. 
And that's the end of the blog story. Permission to share this article was given by Tom. As long as it's shared completely with all links, it remains unaltered. And you can find this blog right here at DoloresCannonQHHT.com. And you can find Tom Wagbo at MatrixHealing.no. That's MatrixHealing.no. The next blog article I'd like to read is actually one introduced by me, but mostly written by my friend, my wonderful friend, Laura Casto. The name of this blog article is Laura's QHHT Miracle. The date that this was uploaded to our blog was September 12, 2015, but it was written quite some time before that, and it's actually found on Dolores Cannon's main website. What you are about to read is a very special testimonial about quantum healing hypnosis therapy from a very special woman. This is a testimonial from a woman who was talking with her family about entering hospice but did not. This is a testimonial from a woman who regained her health completely and with it created a wonderful new life. Laura Casto is a woman who was, not very long ago, given very little hope of survival. She is a woman who, through the amazing process of QHHT, came to understand her soul's powerful connection to Source and God and how through that connection she was able to completely manifest multiple miracles to deliver her from death's door to a complete and total health. But let me back up a bit. This is probably a good place to share some basic information about results of quantum healing hypnosis that might surprise you. I know that it surprised me. I see miracles happen. I do not see them every session, but I do see them. I witness them manifest sometimes immediately right before my eyes. Sometimes I hear about them later. And each miracle is a reason to celebrate and have profound gratitude. When I witness restored hearing, cancer eliminated, birth defects reversed, surgeries averted, marriages saved, prayers to God's source fully answered, I often ask if the client would be willing to share their stories so that others may also learn what is possible for themselves and also what is possible for all of humankind. Here's the surprise. <laughs> Nearly all of them decline. Or else they promise to write a testimonial letter and then they just don't. I spent years wondering about this, questioning how is it if a person can access such wondrous things, health, healing, peace, connection to God and Source, why would they not want to share that? If their lives have been utterly turned around after a single session with QHHT, why would they not tell the world? I would, or would I? I now know why most do not tell their story. There are many reasons, but two stand out. One has to do with family stories. Shame still often accompanies forgiveness, at least cultural shame. And most of these stories revolve around deeply hidden family secrets or tightly held anger and resentments. Even if the client moves into total acceptance and forgiveness, others around them might not. And the second reason is also a deeply held cultural concept. We as a society mostly frown upon and deny the idea that an individual has the power to contact God or Source directly or manifest their own miracle. And to announce that a miracle has happened is often an invitation to judgment and ridicule. Many religions profess the only way that one can access God or Source and anything deemed miraculous is through their own narrowly specific doctrines, most of which rely upon dependency on others or certainly upon a power that is outside of the self. Most people are unwilling to offer themselves up to a religious ridicule. Who needs that? Especially if you've just been given a new life. These are two of the main reasons there are not more public testimonials on QHHT, and hopefully someday that will change. 
I used to wish or hope that at least some of these people would change their minds and tell their story to the public. But you know what? I've come to believe that most of them are very wise to keep their miracles private and precious. They know, sometimes and even unconsciously, they know that having friends, family, co-workers judge their lives or belittle their miracles, or worse, cast doubt or even fear upon how their improvements manifested might compromise them. And they're right, they could. So they keep quiet about their healings, their relationship miracles, the other improvements in their world in order to protect them. I completely understand that and I do support them. Almost everyone who's had these life-changing sessions keep the details safely to themselves. And who can blame them? But every once in a while, one of our clients bravely comes forward with their story, confident enough in their life to share the details in the hopes that others might benefit. And Laura Casto is one of these people. She was a client of Dolores Cannon herself in June of 2012. And she tells her story in her own words below. May the creator of all that is continue to bless your life and your family, Laura, and thank you. You are one very special woman. So here now are Laura Casto's words. She delivered the following speech to the Oklahoma Psychic Research and Education Association Fair on September 7th, 2013, just a little more than a year after her session with Dolores. And here it is. I am so happy to be here today to share my story and my experience with quantum healing hypnosis. June 20th, 2012 changed my life forever. At that time I was using a walker and was oxygen dependent with no hope or time. I was struggling to stay alive. I had arthritis so severe in my cervical vertebrae it had flattened the spinal cord in my neck. This area of the cord regulates the heart and lungs. So my physician prescribed a walker to prevent a fatal fall. I am also a silicone breast implant survivor from 1984. It was protocol at that time to remove the breast tissue and place silicone implants behind the pectoralis chest muscles for women with severe fibrocystic disease. I trusted Western medicine and was told the implants were harmless. Six months after the implant surgery, I developed asthma and also pneumonia. I had the implants for seven years. They leaked into my lungs and throughout my body, causing multiple health problems. The silicone had compromised my immune system. The damage was done. For 27 years, I was in and out of hospitals with uncontrollable, severe asthma and sometimes even pneumonia. My health had become so compromised on three different occasions, various physicians advised me to medically retire, but I would not give up. I feared each time I was admitted to the hospital was my last. There were times when the physician told my daughters not to leave my bedside, fearing the end was near. The years of having both severe asthma and the aggressive treatment damaged my heart and lungs, ca causing pulmonary hypertension. And pulmonary hypertension is a progressive terminal disease with a life expectancy of two to five years. And 2012 was year number six. I was living on borrowed time. Both lower lobes of my lungs had deflated, making it difficult to breathe, even with oxygen. My body was starting to shut down. I was homebound for seven years. Leaving the confines of my home became dangerous as it could exacerbate my asthma. I had a home health nurse and was counseled about hospice. At times I wondered how my family would be without me. I was depressed and felt alone. I felt no one really understood what I was going through. Over the years the silicone affected my pancreas. I developed chronic pancreatitis in 2011, forcing me to be on a liquid diet. 
An MRI revealed multiple cysts in my liver, a cyst on my kidney, and one in my pancreas. Fifteen months ago, I was on multiple oral medications, breathing treatments several times a day, and three inhalers. One inhaler was so expensive I purchased it from Canada. I was using increasing amounts of oxygen and using a walker. Time was running out. I tuned within daily asking for guidance and healing. I asked for a miracle and then I met Dolores Cannon. I met Dolores Cannon at a UFO conference in April 2012. She was the keynote speaker. I spoke with her as she autographed her books that I had purchased. We talked about my condition and she asked her assistant to put me on the waiting list. At that time the waiting list was five years long. It has now grown to eight years at the time of the writing it was. It went even further than that later. I told the assistant I had the money, I had a ride, and I lived in Oklahoma City so it was a short drive. I had everything but time. I had children and grandchildren. I needed time. So not long after, in May, I received an email from Dolores' assistant notifying me for a cancellation for June 20th. My miracle had happened. I had hope. I feel so blessed. Dolores teaches QHHT all over the world. She's rarely home. She had returned for two weeks, and on her free time, she does one session a week. The client, a client, the week prior to my session flew in from China. My heart was filled with gratitude. Quantum healing hypnosis isn't a gimmick. It transforms lives. It's a technique of personal empowerment and realization of our own wisdom. It helps one find their individual power to manifest and connect to the source of answers that are inside of us. Sometimes we need the experience shown to us of another life to bring awareness and insight to our present life. Once issues are identified, the transformation begins and the issues are resolved. If one surrenders, accepts, and believes. In other words, ask, believe, allow, and receive. My big lesson in this la life was to ask for help and to allow and receive. During my session, I learned it had taken me several lifetimes to ask for help. In this lifetime, it took me losing my career, my health, my home, and all my possessions. I remember Dolores saying, It's okay to share the burden. It gives others a chance to learn their lessons. And then I finally got it. During the past life I experienced in my session, I was showed pride. kept me from learning the lesson of asking for help. I also learned it was unworthiness in this lifetime. I did not feel worthy to ask for help. And during my session, the cause of unworthiness was identified. As I resolved the issues and understood the lessons presented to me, the transformation began. Those clients who avoid resolving their issues will not transform. Everyone has issues. Some deal with them, heal and move on, while others deny the issues exist and no change occurs. We are given free will on this third dimensional earth and those who choose to go through life and ignore their issues become stuck and struggle. The success is strictly up to the client and how much they want to change. We must fix ourselves. An interview is conducted with the client before the session. The interview gives the client an opportunity to communicate with the practitioner about their concerns, significant events, health or personal issues, and expectations. It also gives the client an opportunity to share their history and experiences that can help bring insight and awareness to their present life. The day of my session, I was with Dolores for seven hours. She asked me to share my life history from childhood to present. She observed, asked questions, and interjected information, some of which I did not want to hear. But it was imperative for any changes to occur. She gave me insight and tools to help me navigate my life. She gave me wisdom and a future. She explained how the past can affect the present. She taught me the importance of letting go and living in the present. She taught me the importance of manifestation and positive thoughts. She taught me to speak my truth and not worry about others' reactions. She stressed the importance of surrounding myself with positive beings 
beings that serve me and my purpose. She gave me permission to live my life on my terms and not others. I knew all of this, but had not applied it to my own life. She explained that fear was an illusion and the only real thing in life was love. She explained how love is an action, not just a word. She spoke and I listened. I applied my awareness and insight to my life, my new life. The transformation was beginning. The next part of the session was powerful. And ironically, halfway through my session, the electricity went off. The timing was impeccable. I had learned lessons, ingested information, and gained awareness. As Dolores and I were in the dark, listening to the constant loud squealing of my oxygen concentrator, the source told her to shut off the machine because Laura doesn't need it anymore. Message received. As the session continued, the lower lobes of my lungs were inflated. My silicone damaged and infected lungs felt different now. I could actually take a deep breath. I could breathe on my own and there was no pain. I was told during the session my asthma was a carryover from the death in the past life I had experienced in the session. I died in a dust storm. Once the carryover was identified, my asthma improved significantly. The silicone also contributed to my asthma. Once the transformation began, the silicone was removed. Presently, I'm off all asthma medications and oxygen. Upon my return home, I asked my physician to x-ray my lungs. Both lower lobes were inflated and moving air. The cervical vertebrae in my neck had been transformed by the use of light and energy. I could turn my head with no pain. Now, I've fallen twice since my session with Dolores, and I've had MRIs after both falls, verifying the cervical vertebrae are normal now. The transformation continued by dissolving the cyst in my thyroid. I had my endocrinologist check my thyroid a few weeks after my session. He could not find the cyst with the ultrasound. He did labs, and a week later, his nurse called to inform me my test results were normal. The multiple cysts in my liver were addressed, as well as the cyst on my kidney and in my pancreas. I no longer have chronic pancreatitis. My heart and lungs were also transformed. I was told the arteries in my lungs had hardened and were not functioning, functioning properly, putting a strain on my heart. A few weeks ago, my cardiologist checked my heart, and for the first time in years, I had a normal EKG. He told me my pulmonary hypertension was not progressing. Great news. I taught physical education for over 30 years, and most of those years were outside under the sun, in the wind, with the earth beneath my feet. I loved the sweet essence and sounds of Mother Earth. I grieved for Mother Earth in my old life when I was housebound those seven years. And I often sat looking out the window trying to remember what it was like to be close to nature. Now I walk under the sun, in the wind, with the earth beneath my feet. I hear the loving sounds of nature once again. I enjoy the clouds, the stars, and the moon. I feel so blessed. I've been given a second chance. I know everything happens on a higher level, and I know I have been guided on my new life. Dolores Cannon took my hand. I trusted her in quantum healing hypnosis, and she led me on this new journey. And there's no way... I could ever possibly repay her for the transformation of my life. And now I'm a dedicated practitioner of quantum healing hypnosis therapy and want to help others. It was a promise I made myself, to myself, and to Dolores. One must remember quantum healing hypnosis not only transformed the client's life, but also the lives of their family and of others too. When I arrived home from my session with Dolores, a few days had passed before I visited my oldest daughter. As I walked through the door, she said, Mom, you look different. I shared my experience with quantum healing hypnosis. She hugged me tightly with tears in her eyes and said, I have my mother back. With my daughter in my arms and a lump in my throat, I told her I loved her, and I said, Yes, I am back. My youngest daughter and son-in-law are expecting their first baby, and when I told her I had planned to attend the quantum healing practitioner's reunion. <laughs> she said, Mom, I want you to get a tune-up and come home with everything working well so you'll be ready for the baby. <laughs> with a lump in my throat and a smile on my face, I said, Will do. 
Thanks to Dolores and Quantum Healing Hypnosis, I have a new life. My heart is filled with gratitude and love. I cherish every minute I spend with my family or friends. I've found joy in this life again. I can go outside, enjoy all of nature's beauty. I feel connected and believe we're all one. I don't feel alone anymore. I'm living a full life at last. I believe in this technique. And now I ask, believe, allow, and receive. Thank you for allowing me to share the transformation of my life. Namaste. Laura Casto. Laura has come to be one of my best friends in the world. And she and her partner, Joan Murray, actually have made transformations in my own family with, with my parents. And that's a story for another time, though. But you can contact Laura. She lives in Moore, Oklahoma at shine underscore your underscore light at hotmail.com or you can go to DoloresCannonQHHT.com and find Laura under the listings for Oklahoma. Laura is even healthier now and helps other people heal and I visit with her every chance I can and she's an amazing incredible woman and it was very touching for me to read her story. And I'm going to read just one more blog piece today. Um, this is a shorter one. This one was posted March 30th, 2016 by practitioner April Silbaugh. April is a practitioner in Sundance, Wyoming. And here is April's blog. A Healer's Letter to Self. Lately, in my QHHT sessions, I have been getting messages from the client's SC. And SC is what practitioners use as an abbreviation to either mean subconscious or source self, superconscious, or sometimes higher self. So she's been getting messages from the client's SC, even when I don't ask for them. Sometimes I find this is a little uncomfortable and feel like I'm in the hot seat. The last one, though, I really tried to listen and make sense of the message and listen to the recording. The common theme is that I need to love myself, which led me to think about it and realized I don't know how to love myself. So I decided to write a letter to myself, and this is what it said. Dear Self, I want to take a minute to tell you that from this moment on, I will do my best to love you and take care of you. I'm sorry it's taking me so long to take care of this. I guess I've always thought there were more important things to do. I thought that I needed to love my friends and my spouse and my children first, and loving you could wait. I put off listening to your concerns and needs and thought it wasn't as important as other things, but I was wrong. You are so important. Your needs and your wants are also important, and I promise to listen with, with all of my heart from now on. In the past, I thought it was selfish to listen and take care of you first. I thought it was egotistical to give you praise. But in neglecting you, I've let others down. And in not taking care of you, I've let myself crumble. Like a hollow house with no foundation or walls to support it. The house you've had to dwell in was full of worry and lack of trust. A cold, loveless dwelling. But today I'm changing all of that. Starting today, I'm filling you with love and support and care. I'm listening to you and accepting you for everything that you are in this moment. Nothing more, nothing less. I no longer demand that you be better and no longer lecture you that you aren't good enough. You are enough. You are important and perfect just the way you are. Your imperfections are what make you perfect. <laughs> I'd like to tell my body and all the cells in my body what a wonderful job you have done over the years. I haven't given you enough praise, and yet you continued. Heartbeat after heartbeat, step after step, breath after breath, and made it possible to experience this world. I thank you for that. I know that to honor and accept you is to love you, and by loving you, I'm loving God. Love with all of my heart, soul, and mind, April. April wrote this originally on our support form to the other pra practitioners and then says, well, maybe some of you who are healers are struggling with this too. We are healers. 
That's what we do help people, but sometimes we lose sight of how very important it is to love ourselves first. Thank you to the SC for reminding me. My friend April Silbaugh is an active member of Dolores Cannon's original support forum community. She's been a member since 2013, and again, she practices in Sundance, Wyoming. You can find her at sunnyfieldshealing.com. That's sunnyfieldshealing.com, or you can find her under the Wyoming Practitioners at Dolores Cannon, qhht.com. Well, it looks like I'm out of time for reading blog stories today. I want to thank everyone for listening, and I'm going to do this again for sure. Again, I'd like to remind those of you who are interested in quantum healing or who are looking for a practitioner of Dolores' method, or if you're already a practitioner, you can find a robust support community to join. All of that at DoloresCannonQHHT.com. That's DoloresCannonQHHT.com. And you can find out more about my own practice of quantum healing and my many services at NewEarthJourney.com. So until next time, sleep well, be well, and many blessings to you all. Thank you for tuning in. Good night.